T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning, 2, 1, 0, and lift off. 5, 10, 3, 4. You're listening to the Twisted 10, bringing you original and unique post-created top 10 lists recorded live in world-famous Cocoa Beach, Florida with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. All right, welcome to the next episode of the Twisted 10. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Adam Poston. Sitting across from me is my boy. I am Tack Van Sickle. What up, Tack? How are you? Super, how are you? I'm doing good. And sitting in studio with us as a guest this week, but not guest host, she's just sitting in with us as listening to my Twisted Tin list, is Andrea Joy. Hi. How are Hi. you? I'm very good. I must say, I really did like your episode last week on the Twisted Laws that are still in place across the states. That was a pretty <laughs> yeah. good episode. I guess that's why you let me come in tonight. This well, is her third time on the show, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Starting to become a regular thing. No, Ooh, don't I, get too comfortable. <laughs> I can't get enough of you guys. You guys are just too <laughs> fabulous. So let me get right into it, Tack. What's one of the things that you enjoy doing when you come over to the Twisted 10 Studios? Um, well, I... You always seem to cater each event. Okay. So that's always nice. Catering's good. So so food. Okay, what else? What um, else do you enjoy partaking in when you're here? Vaping, okay, that's fine. What um, else? Well, I was gonna say it. I just didn't know oh, how no, that's that's you're getting it. Um I enjoy Andrea Joy. <laughs> okay. And we're we're kinda of beating around the bush. Consumption of a product sometimes. What else do you consume? In the okay, studio. I get it. You buy everything from me. No, no. I enjoy drinking my wine. <laughs> there we go. Oh, well, I don't drink wine. I drink Coke Zero. You drink some beer when you come over here, too. Oh, yeah, every once in a while. Yes. Yeah, sure. And a whiskey. And oh. whiskey, bourbon. You had a bourbon over here one time. You had a Jack and Coke a long time back. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I did. Like my first time oh, here. Oh, don't be shy, Tack. No, my first time here, I did. I did. You're right. All right. So this week on yeah. the Twisted 10, yeah. I'm presenting you yeah. with. Yeah. The Twisted yeah. Drinking Traditions or Games from Around the World. Ooh. Do we have to play each one? Interesting. Mm, I would like to play <laughs> each one of these. <laughs> so these are, are drinking games or traditions. It, it's a mix of both. Right. From some are in the U.S. and some are from all over the world. So we're going to, there is a twist to this episode. Okay, I was going to ask you, is there a twist? I'm not going to tell you to the end. I'm going to let you guess. But there, Guess what the def- twist is? Well, no, no, no. I'll tell you what the twist is, but you have oh, to okay. guess based gotcha, on the gotcha, questions. Gotcha, gotcha. So we're going to start off right off the bat at number 10 with the U.S. This is called the Great American Challenge. Now, you're not telling us what the twist is? No, I won't tell you the twist until the end. Okay, got you. Go ahead. Okay. So the Great American Challenge. This is less of a drinking game and more of an intoxication triathlon. Isn't that a great combination of words? (laughs) Intoxication triathlon. awful. (laughs) I'm not a big drinker, but man. Teams of four must compete. To first conquer a 30 pack of beer, then triumph over an eighth of an ounce of marijuana, then prevail over two large pizzas, and finally, after all three of those, complete a hundred piece puzzle before midnight. The wow. order the order of the first three events doesn't matter. You can vary those. And mostly it is a matter of who can complete it as opposed to who finishes first. You have to do the puzzle at the very end. That's the, the last competition. Those who complete the challenge win nothing but glory and bragging rights over their friends. <laughs> Does it say what time this starts? No. Nope. You have till midnight, so you can <laughs> no. start it like <laughs> four. Yeah, Twelve yeah, hours so. before. <laughs> yeah. What do you think would be the hardest part about that? Well, how many how many how many people are on a team? Four per team. So oh, thirty four, beers okay. isn't too bad. Okay. I don't know how much I'm not a pot smoker, so I don't know how much an eighth of an ounce of marijuana is. Is that a I lot? I don't know either. I think it's like one of them twenty bag things, maybe. What's like, a 20 bag? I would say like this much, but that doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help a listener. <laughs> no. It's like a pickle. Like yeah, a like the size pickle. of a pickle. <laughs> That's a lot. Or maybe like in like when the the pickles are like quarter or put in half. A spear? Yeah, a spear. Huh. Like maybe like a spear, <laughs> a pickle spear. But that even then, that's a lot. I So I've heard. <laughs> so, but you can do the puzzle first? No, has to be last. Puzzle has so to be last. So you have to have done all first three of those things. So drink 30 beers, <clears throat> uh, smoke an eighth. Or consume an eighth 
of an ounce of marijuana. I could be wrong. Maybe it's smaller. But you have a weight. team of four. Yep. So you could have three people do all of that and the fourth person do the puzzle. I don't know if that... It's a team of four. I mean, interesting. There are no bylaws the here. Person person can can do the puzzle. Puzzle. So two My people drink rules. the beer. No. You can't have one person smoke that much marijuana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's going to be one stone motherfucker. There's no way. Yeah, no. That, oh, my God. I don't think that's an eighth, though. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's An ugh. eighth of what? Like regular or like An eighth of an ounce. Of, I, look, I don't know. Purple Kush from the next thing. I have no clue. <laughs> well, okay. Is, it, I don't, okay. is this medicinal? When I... When yeah. I I don't know. Never mind. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, Zach was about to come into some revelations there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe I'll tell the story <laughs> off here. How's that? It sounds good. All right. So moving along. All right. So number nine, we're going to go to Hong Kong. This is called the Hong Kong Animal Spirit. <laughs> One of the traditions they have there is to put dead animals in alcohol and let it sit there for multiple years. It supposedly puts the properties of that animal into the alcohol Ew. so that you become like the animal when you drink it. Ew. Cobra Gross. wine, for example, I've heard of that. Is supposed to give you the strength of a cobra. A tiger penis vodka mm. is supposed to be for virility. You know what virility is, Ty? Is that like fertility? Dick strong. Dick strong. Yes. Strong like bull. I drink that all the time. And sex drive. Mm-hmm. They put turtles in another alcohol and geckos in another. So they put all these animals in all these different alcohols to consume the the essence yeah, the of that animal. Power of insurance. <laughs> I see what you did there. See what I did there. But they really believe there's a connection with these animals. So that's one of Hong Kong's traditions. Be some shitty tasting. Why some all fermented animal up in your up in your beer? Yeah, that sounds. I would just not be good. sick before I was. I've Even heard drunk. about the Cobra one before. I think I've had some buddies that are well, drinking that. You know, that you've ever heard of horny goat weed and those types of pills that, you know, you can buy at like the convenience stores that are supposed to make your. Can you libido? buy like a I don't pickle think spear? Have goat in them. Them <laughs> no, those are supposed to have animal byproducts in them that you're supposed to. It's supposed to enhance certain things. Does the same thing happen if I eat a hamburger? <laughs> I get the power of the cow. She's onto something. Power of the cow. You are definitely onto something. <laughs> How is she onto something? But that's cooked. Not fermented every years. Is that what the difference is? Is that how you yeah, get Yeah, that's the a big difference. Listen, <laughs> let's just put it this way. There is no living... Rotting twi- cow, fresh cow. The Twisted Tin does not endorse consuming of animal products that have been in alcohol for <laughs> no, several years. Definitely um, not. I don't endorse and it And we are we lean on the edge of scientific data, and there is none to support this. So what do you get from the worm and the tequila? Um, the, drunk to see the donkey show for free. You know that's actually an <laughs> urban legend. There, there has never been a worm in a bottle of tequila, per, uh, uh, by manufacturing ever once. What they sell They're, popsicle or little lollipops with the worm? Those are them. those are novelties. There's never been a company that has produced a tequila brand with a worm in the bottle ever. So who puts the worm in it? Uh, bars. That's the only way that a worm would ever get inside a tequila bottle. All right. Urban Legends. Huh. Throwback to one of your episodes, Tack. Right. All right. Moving right along. Let's move over to Sweden. <laughs> Is that French? <laughs> yeah. Sweden. Like. French from Sweden. Sweden, yeah. All right. So Sweden Viking. It's all about eye contact in this Scandinavian country. A throwback to Viking days when making eye contact while toasting was necessary to avoid a broad sword to the stomach. Eye contact is now more of a social necessity than life preventing. A return gaze when clinking glasses is a sign of mutual respect. So a tradition <laughs> when you're creepy. in Sweden, if you don't clink glasses with eye contact and maintain that eye contact, how you're, long? You're, I mean, I don't know, four or five seconds. I, I don't, it's I've, important in Germany, too. Is it really? Yeah, with Kirsten, every time we do a cheers together, she wants to make sure every time a glass clinks, you look at her in the eye. Really? It's very important in German. Germany. Maybe, maybe she's part Swedish. <laughs> well, isn't... No, that's Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Which ones are known as the nice Germans? <laughs> isn't that Switzerland? Kirsten is known as the nice German. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's got a, a girlfriend that she works with that's just sweet. Actually, she has... The Twisted Ten Studio Podcast, Oliver's brother, Bruno. 
Have I met this girl? I think I met her, didn't I? Yeah, you met her the night we all went out. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she's sweet. Not Sweden. Not Swedish. Not Swedish. <laughs> she's not Swedish. She's Swedish. Just sweet. Swedish, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I don't do voices very no, well. That was However, decent. I did get a compliment from Ron on my uh, Obama voice that I did last week. <laughs> I gotcha. Um, all right, so moving right along. That what was number, number eight. We are yeah. now on number seven. Number seven. This is called Sicily Sobriety. Italian? Um, is Sicily is Italian? I don't, I don't, I'm not good with geography. Yeah. Okay. Drinking is an obvious pastime for Sicilians. There was a drink called the Autista, which means driver, as in designated driver. They invented this drink to keep people going, to sober them up so that they can drink more. So kind of an ingenious bar back type of gag to get people to continue to drink. Water? No, it's a bunch of ingredients, but the most important one is baking soda. They put it in at the very end so it looks like a volcano. You, The trick is you have to drink it before the beer or the drink bubbles over. You burp, but it settles all the acids in your stomach and coincidentally has zero effect on sobriety. So it's just a bar <laughs> gag. So you're drink. chugging a drink of alcohol to make yourself sober. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> say it's got alcohol in it. But it has baking soda and a bunch of other ingredients. They didn't identify the ingredients that were on this website that were in the drink. Hmm. But the Sicily Sobriety. What if we go to a bar that claims to know all the drinks in the world and you order, I want the Sicily Sobriety, please. I wonder if they would know what the hell that is. Hmm. Maybe you should make a bet and say they have to buy you a drink if you can't make a drink that they could you could pick. Hmm. I like the idea. Let's 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 try it. Next we'll time try we go it. out. Yep, definitely. All right, cool. Cool. All right, so the next one. Number. We are on number six number out of the six. twisted traditions, the twisted drinking traditions or games from around the world. Okay. Number six is called Wizard Staff. Wizard Staff. You ever heard of this one? My nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Levioso. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> Prove yourself the mightiest of mages and the most spectacular of sorcerers with a game of wizard staff. Throughout the night of spells, spirits, and slurred speech, every time a wizard finishes a beer, cans, he mm. must tape his new beer on top using a single layer wrap of tape, duct tape for example. The challenge comes from keeping your staff together whilst drinking from the top. So do you understand what you're doing? Yeah. You drink a beer down, you stack another one on top and tape it, and you open that, then drink that. So as you go on the night, yeah. you get it gets bigger and bigger. At any time, other wizards may challenge one another with Gandalf's famous utterance, you shall not pass, yes. yeah. and proceed to swing their scepters together until one breaks. <laughs> the weaker wizard must drink the equivalent of how many cans were broken off the scepter. Wow. Ooh, I'm going to play that, but I'm going to get some as on, <clears throat> seen on TV laser bond. <laughs> Sneak that around my staff. <laughs> no wait, one's going to break what? me. <laughs> she, she's sneaking yeah. around her staff. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? It does sound pretty fun, though. The, sounds the wizard staff cool. sounds pretty fucking cool, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, like I'm going to keep my staff big and hard all night. <laughs> I am grabbing that sound bite and using that for something. I don't know what yet. <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, so that was number six. We go 10 to six, take a break, and uh, come back and finish the last five. So out of those first five, Tack, yeah. do you know what my twist may be? No. It doesn't have anything to do with making them up. None of these are made up. I'll That's tell you that good. now. Okay. That was my first go-to. Yep, none. But then, no, I have no idea. All right. So I do. You do? Yeah. Is it because I told you? I don't know, is it? I don't, know, I don't remember if I told you that. <laughs> I All could right. just be making that up. And you won't believe what happens next after the break. <laughs> Hey, this is Adam. This week's Twisted 10 is brought to you by... Eh, just Tack and myself. We don't have a sponsor for this week's show. So Tack and I have been talking a lot about having sponsorships in our podcast, weighing the pros and the cons. You know, we're a big fan of having more content than advertising. So as opposed to listening to a radio show where 40% of your time that you're listening to the show is built around sponsorships, Tack and I think that the content delivery is far more important. While the delivery of content of a podcast is paramount to the success of the show... 
Sometimes you got to have sponsors to help cover some of the bills. While we do have two sponsors currently for both of our shows, that's The Twisted Ten, which is this show, and Living Podcariously, which is another show that Tack and I produce, a little bit more raw and rough, we do have some opportunities that are coming up for other sponsors. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor of The Twisted Ten or Living Podcariously, shoot us an email at show at livingpodcariously.com, and we'll get back with you with the contract details. Welcome back to the Twisted Ten. Uh, this I'm going to recap the first five for you, Tack. Cool. And Andrea. Uh, so these are the Twisted Drinking Traditions or Games from around the world. Number ten was the Great American Challenge, starting it off in the U.S. Number nine was the Hong Kong Animal Spirit. Number eight was the Sweden Viking. Hmm. Sweden, yeah. Number seven was the Sicily Sobriety. And number six was Wizard Staff. Also a U.S. one, by the way. <laughs> I do like that one. That one's cool. So moving on to number five. Number five. This is Australia Goon of Fortune. Have you ever heard of this before? <laughs> no. Never. All right. The folks from Down Under bring us dizzy- a dizzying game based on the popular game show Wheel of Fortune. In order to capture the authentic Australianness of the game, be sure to use proper vocab in polite company. To say the game... Peg any number of goosenacks, that's boxed wine, to a hill's hoist, that's a type of rotating clothesline. So imagine a spinning clothesline in a circle Mm -hmm. and have everyone stand in a circle around it. Give it a good spin and players must get a mouthful of whatever goon stops in front of them. So back this up just so you get the picture here. You get a spinning, rotating uh, uh, clothesline, get a bunch of friends, get a bunch of boxed wines that are multiple colors. Put them up there and spin it around. And wherever it stops, that person has to take that drink. Be sure your variety of goon bags reflects the variety of colors on Wheel of Fortune wheel and fill one with plain water to play as the bankrupt space. Play until no one can spin anymore. Oh, jeez. Wow. Yes. So that's crikey. A, <laughs> crikey, mate. I couldn't do the accent on goosack, goosenacks, hills hoist, or peg or any of the other ones i'm like what can i say i'm just a goon bag myself <laughs> <laughs> all right moving right along tour de franzia number four number four tour de franzia you know what franzia is i know what france is franzia think drinking that's boxed wine again oh okay. the franzia boxed wine have you ever seen that at the stores no no oh okay Maybe I'm the only box wine drinker. Mm-hmm. Drunk athletes can prove themselves a regular Lance Liverstrong. Haha, <laughs> get it? Dude. Lance Armstrong, Lance <laughs> Liverstrong, by competing in the Tour de Franzia. Teams of four compete in a relay where each player must endeavor a chug Franzia boxed wine and complete a lap on a bike, which can be anything from a neighborhood block to an obstacle course. While the first teammate is on their lap, the second rider chugs as much Franzia Franzia as possible before passing off the bag to the next person and writing. What the first team to finish their Franzia and laps wins is up to whoever's running the league. But everyone gets scrapes, bruises, and possibly missing teeth for participating. So do you get the idea here? Mm -hmm. A box of wine is like four bottles of wine. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a team of four people. You should not chug wine. Well, the idea here is to compete. This is a competition. This is a... This This isn't a relaxing wine-drinking afternoon here. This is a... (laughs) You're in a competition with your competitors here to beat them. So puking is fine. I, I you guess. Can I mean, keep going. that's up to the that's up to the organizer. Uh-huh. That's up to hmm. the coordinator. Uh, I think that would be a pretty fun little challenge. So you get I don't bicycles. Know about that one. You get bicycles. Yeah. You set up either an obstacle course or a lap around a neighborhood. Our new neighborhood would be perfect for that. No, it won't. It's a long, <laughs> it's a long lap too, and you make them go around that's and around and around. Said. Sorry. What? It's long. It's a long lap. I'm sorry. Long laugh. I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> sorry. Know. It's like little dog laps. No. Okay. Well, I'll take your word for it, Tech. Andrea, dog laps. <laughs> she'll laugh. If you just look at her and she'll laugh. Do it. No, I didn't no, do it. Didn't no, work. It didn't work I'm out, tough. did it? I'm strong. Mm-hmm. All right. Liver so number strong. It just turned me on. That's all. Giggity. Right? See what I did to her? <laughs> All right. So number four was Tour de France. Yeah. Number three. Number three. Japan's round table. So mm. Japan takes social drinking very seriously. So knowing the ins and outs of drinking with your pals is vital to avoid offense. Because, you know, 
J- Japanese in their culture, if you do something incorrectly, they can take offense very, very easily. Hmm. First things first, never pour your own beer when out with friends. So if you go out in a group of friends, you touch your own beer to pour it, that's considered rude or insensitive. Damn, we just got to sit there with an empty glass till somebody goes, would you like some more? Is kind that of. why you always make me pour your beer? Damn right. <laughs> Each round calls for a chief pourer. You must plan to go as many rounds as there are people, with one pourer per round who fills everyone's glasses. Repeat the process until each participant has poured. So if if you're going out drinking with a group of buddies, like let's say on a bachelor party or something, and you're in Japan, mm-hmm. and you got 10 guys, guess what? That's 10 rounds of drinks, my friend. You have mm. to drink them. Not drinking your drink is considered offensive. Drinking or, or filling up your own glass, considered offensive. So keep that in mind if you happen to be in Japan going out with a group of guys. Or you may want to sit wow. with a smaller group if you don't want to drink that many. Yeah. But it's considered rude. If you leave the, the table without drinking after everyone is poured, you're you're kind of the douche. Hey! All right, number two. Number two. <laughs> number two and number one are by far my favorite on this list, by the way. Number Ooh. two and number one. Oh, sorry. So this comes from Germany. Oh, props to Kirsten and her... Mm-hmm. Her homeland. I've heard of this before as well. This is German stump, or also known as its better name, Hammerschlagen. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Hammerschlagen before? That no. sounds very familiar. This this sounds like something I would really, really was like. Was that to your do. nickname in high school? Hammerschlagen? No, 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 no. <laughs> Mine was actually Postman because I was posting and it sounded like Postman. Mm. Yeah. We have a post in at my work. Really? Mm-hmm. Small world. For, all right, so Hammerschlagen or German Stump. For those of you looking to get really hammered in both senses of the word, there's a game for you. To play, you need one hammer, one tree stump, and one nail for every player that you have on the team. And lots of beers. Everyone takes their turn trying to hammer down everyone else's nails, whether it's the nails in the stump or the nails in the other player's fingers. But players can't simply swing the hammer. It must be flipped once in the air, caught and brought down immediately, hit someone else's nail, they drink. Miss, you drink, hit your own nail, and you have to drink all of your drink. Hmm. So, think about it. You've got a tree stump in front of you. Yeah. And one nail driven just a tiny bit in for every player that's there. And each one is identified maybe with Sharpie or something for whose is whose. Right. And it's your turn, Tack. You grab the hammer, you flip it in the air, catch it, and straight down onto the nail. Mm-hmm. That you're aiming for. If you miss, you drink. And the idea also is to try to get it into one hit. So you immediately nail that person's nail all the way, or hammer that person's nail all the way down into the tree stump. I get mm. it every time. Would you? Yep. Are you good at nailing? I'm totally good at nailing. Mm-hmm. Are you good at working with stumps? Because that's what I got working with. <laughs> I'm good at working with anything. Hammers? They call me MacGyver. <laughs> Sweet. Wow. So that is German Stump or Hammerschlagen. Hmm. Take right. me to Germany. I'll show you. <laughs> okay. The number one twisted drinking tradition or game from around the world. Yep. It's a U.S. game. We're wrapping it up with the U.S. Here we go. God bless the USA. This is a game of hmm. U.S. of A. Battle <laughs> Shots. Oh, yeah. Battle Shots. Have you heard of Battle Shots? I played I Battle Shots. It's everybody's favorite maritime warfare board game with an alcoholic twist. You know Battleship, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Every time one of your shot ship's section gets hit, you must sink it down your gullet. So, you know how a battleship has, <clears throat> excuse me, has got all of the different pieces. Some are five hits wide, some are three, whatever. Well, instead, those represent shots. So, on a potential board of yours, you might have 25 shots. On your board, if you if somebody shoots you and hits you, you have to do the shot wherever it landed, corresponding with the, the 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 location where that shot was sitting. If the way it's traditionally enjoyed by college students in pajamas playing on old pizza boxes with crappy goods, grids drawn on it doesn't sound fun enough to you, you can actually buy the Battle Shots trademarked box set from your local game store. Okay, so that's that's all of them. I'm gonna read you back all ten. Before I give you guys my twist on this. All right. So, number 10, the Great American Challenge. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what that one was? That was where you had to drink and like... It's like a triathlon. <laughs> Pizza and... Marijuana. Yeah. Pickle. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Hong Kong Animal Spirit. 
Yeah. You drink Sw- the dead animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweden Viking. Sicily Sobriety. Mm-hmm. Wizard Staff. Mm-hmm. Australian Guna Fortune. Mm-hmm. Tour de Franzia. Japan's Round Table. German Stump or Hammerschlagen. Finally, U.S. Battle Shots. Mm-hmm. So, the twist, Tack and Andrea. <clears throat> yeah. I have done two of these games. Okay. I never finished two of them, but I played two of them. Right. So, based on what you know of me, mm-hmm. let's see if you can guess which two I've done before. I'm thinking USA. <laughs> we have three from the USA. I, I'm going to say Battle Shots. Battle Shots I did, and I kind of gave it away because I started saying my friend, my buddy Josh over in Tampa, listener mm-hmm. of the podcast, and also one of our sponsors that occasionally sponsors our shows with uh, Raven a Box. Uh, he had a party over at his place, and sure enough, I walked in and I saw Battle Shots set up. I'd never seen it before in my life, and mm-hmm. that game was set up. So yeah, I played Battle Shots before. We played it with pairs, mm-hmm. so it wasn't just one person doing all the shots oh, on yeah. the table. So one so person was in too bad. So there's one. Staff? Bingo, spot on. Really? Yeah, Wizard nice. Staff. Nice. Wizard Staff is probably the funnest game, drinking game, because <laughs> people get very creative with their wizard staffs and and start to protect them and make them like a like a trinket that they're carrying around. And yeah, it is it is quite interesting. And they get so big, you can't. It, it's they're bending to the point you're like you've got five or six of them on the ground, and they're starting to come up, and then you're starting to tilt it over. Yeah, they're it's difficult. It's fun, mm-hmm. but it's, laser uh, bond will hold it together. Yeah, we'll have to get some of that. <laughs> stuff. We're going to get that before we have it at our party. <laughs> Definitely, we won't tell anyone we have laser bond though. We'll be in the back, like with the little light laser bonding them together. You know what laser bond is, Tack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure thing. That's yeah. seen on TV. Super yeah. glue with the yeah, yeah. UV light that makes an extra <laughs> oh, super yeah, yeah, bond right. on it. It's a gimmick, but whatever. Yeah. Speaking of gimmicks, I got gimmicked out of. Letting somebody wash or like take off the yellow off of my headlights the other day. I was mm-hmm. at a gas station and these bums come up to me. Hey, we've got the stuff yeah. to clean off your. What do you use? Because I did this just recently too. Did it work? Well, what did you use? I don't know. They used some oh, stuff. Oh. It might have been bum piss. I don't know what it was. <laughs> it was. A buddy of mine said uh, at work, he goes, Hey, if you use dark woods off, um, that it helps get it off. So I was like, And we had some laying around the guard shack. And I was like, All right. You wasted that? What are you talking about wasted it? That's for we have tons of it. Right, we have tons of it at work. It's precious. So stuff. we uh I took it out there, sprayed and wiped off. Sure enough, it took off all that crap on there, but it's not perfectly right. Now. It's a little better. When you first do it, it looks amazing. You're like, holy shit. Like, yeah, it clears it right up. Hmm. But it it still came back a little bit, but it's not as bad at all. Huh. May have to do that. Yeah. Um, there is one game that, yeah, I'm sure there's tons of games you didn't mention. There but, were tons and tons yeah, and yeah. tons of them. But there's one that, um, I don't remember the name of it, but <laughs> I, I had played, well, I, I said I didn't play it, but I was kind of the, um, what's it called when you're like not playing, but you're in charge of it? Organizer? All right. Let's use that. But I was like the organizer Master of the Master of game. ceremonies? <laughs> yeah. Host? Host, whatever. You get the idea. So we kept calling the game Century Twenty One because we couldn't remember the, remember the name of the game, but All right. but it was basically like uh, it had the word Century in it, I think. But um, and it's the only word we could remember. And anyway, it's like a hundred shots of beer in a hundred minutes. Oh jeez! Holy shit! Have you heard of this? <laughs> no. Well, that's the challenge: is do a hundred shots of beer in a hundred minutes. And people were like, a shot of beer. Anybody can do a shot of beer, you know. So. Everybody's like, well, let's try it. And I say everybody is probably like like five or six people who were attempting this. And I was going to be the one that kept the time and filled the glasses and things like that. Or they filled glasses. I was just timekeeper. So if that's a good word for me, I was the timekeeper. All right. So, <laughs> okay. So what's really interesting about this game, <laughs> when you're the sober one and watching the game happen is hilarious. Okay. I recommend it. Be the timekeeper if somebody recommends playing the game at a party. So starts off, you're like, okay, guys, got your shot glasses. Everybody has your shot glass. Okay, fill up the glasses, you know, or whatever shot is, you know, which is an ounce and a half, I think. So we fill up the glasses. All right, cool. And you're like, okay, get ready. And they're like, okay, go. So everybody takes the shot, puts the glass down. And then, you know, that you have to wait for the next minute. So everybody's like, this game's going to take forever. And people are like, 
I'm like, we'll fill your glasses while we're waiting. So they're all filling. And we're like, I'm like, hold on, just wait. Okay, get ready. Go. So we take the next shot. And then now we're just sitting around again. And we're like, yeah. this is boring. Okay. And that goes on for a few more minutes. Then people start feeling it a little bit. So now it turned, it eventually turns into they're sitting around waiting to already, you know, because now time is going faster. Yeah. And then once you get up to like around 12, 13, 14, 15, people start going, I'm putting some music on. <laughs> you know? I'm like, no, no, no. You have to come back. We're getting ready. And now you're like babysitting a bunch of children. Hurt, hurting cats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Counting kittens in a box. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what you're doing now. And then like, you, you have to be like, well, I have to go to the bathroom. Well, take the shot with you because we're about to go in like 12 seconds. And like, already we just took a shot. Like, you know, now you have people having conversations. Somebody's wanting to put music on. Somebody has to go to the bathroom. And you're like, no, no, no. Everybody come back. Come back. And then eventually you're done when you puke. Or unless you just say you're done. Like, you can't do any more. And people didn't make it as high as I thought you would. Like What, like they maybe sur- 40 or something? Not even that high. Like 22, I think. Wow, really? And the people 22 were, shots, really? People though. were puking at like in the high teens, 20s. And I think we didn't even stop go any further in like mid-20s. Holy shit. <clears throat> Mostly because a few people puked and people just lost interest in the game because yeah. they didn't want to sit around and keep having to come back. You know, they We are the generation of ADD. They're getting hot. They want to put music on. They want to bullshit. They want you know. They don't want to be distracted. After by ten it. shots, I'd be like, I'm done. It's it's shots. hilarious to watch <laughs> as the sober guy. It was that's so funny. funny. <laughs> I wanted to but talk about the game of uh, of pass out because that's my favorite, by far my favorite that drinking game to horrible. play. <laughs> no, it is so much fun. Let me put it this way: I'm an expert at this game, and I I deem myself an expert purposefully because <laughs> I've played it more than anyone I know, and I have yet. I have yet to complete one of these games. Hmm. Essentially, the game is your objective is to collect 10 of these pink elephant cards. The pink elephant cards have riddles or not riddles, but they're uh, tongue twisters on the back. Mm -hmm. And all that you have to do is read the card to keep (laughs) the card. (laughs) Now, if you screw it up three times in a row, you have to drink that corresponding number of drinks, but you still get to keep your card. So let's say you pick it up and silly Sally sells seashores by the sea, whatever. (laughs) If you screw it up and your judges is all your opponents. So if you screw it up, you have to take a drink. Right. And then if you screw it up to again and then again, you're two more drinks, but the card stays in your pocket. Gotcha. Um, well, the catch is there's other additional cards on the board that could allow somebody to steal a card if they say it correctly. Oh, okay. There's um, sections on the board where it says this color player has to take a drink. Some cards say these it's all not players. at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That all players take a drink. There's one called Light Up. But since my group doesn't smoke pot, we do a waterfall. Right. So the person who landed on light up starts drinking and then nobody stops until they stop. So if they drink their whole drink, everybody has to drink whatever. It's a lot of consuming of alcoholic beverages. Mm-hmm. The The problem with the game is, is as you continue to play, as people get drunker and drunker, these cards, the, the tongue twisters get harder and harder. So as you're reading it and you start to get more mad and frustrated, the Question cards no. end up taking the damage. What? Um, you say they get harder and harder. Is that because you're getting more drunk or because yes. the cards are in order and they actually... They're not in order. Some okay. of them are harder than others, yes, but no, they're gotcha, more difficult gotcha. because you're... So if you start reading your 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 tongue twister, so Sally sells seashells by the seashore. All right, something mm-hmm. pretty basic and straightforward. If you're drunk or starting to get tipsy, you're starting mm-hmm. to laugh because everybody's waiting for you to screw up. Yeah. Well, as soon as you start and laugh, you just screwed up. You have to drink. Yeah. And that's just a domino effect on top of itself, man. It just keeps adding up and adding up. <laughs> I've had cards, and I just bought a new set of of this game, but I've had cards that were literally ripped in half that I had taped back together because somebody got so mad because they couldn't say it because <laughs> it was a long one. Uh, dude, it is such a fun game. <laughs> it's 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 a lot of fun. Cool. I, I enjoy just the classic beer pong. I, I love that game. So Yeah, I like beer pong too. <laughs> what are you, Andrea? What, game, what drinking games have you done? Seven Minutes in Heaven. That's not it. Can like, we do that now? That's after you spent finished the bottle and you spin it around. I've never done any of those kind of games. I did it a couple of parties. Truth when or I was Dare. I did middle it last school. Week. Yeah. <laughs> Is that I'm, on the cruise? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about what happened on the cruise. <laughs> what happens on the cruise stays on the cruise. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. You want to call it a night? Yeah, man. All right. Well, cool. Um, you're next week, buddy. Yeah. We may have our, our boy Ron coming in, but I'm not sure. 
Do you have a teaser I for your don't. episode just in case? Oh, man, I should. No, that's all right. I was even thinking about it today. Like, what am I going to do? I totally forgot that I need to do a teaser. That's right, all right. It's all good. We may have Ron coming in next week anyway. So uh, we we uh, we should be okay. I didn't provide a teaser for this one. So it's all right. We don't always have to have a teaser in there. We don't always have to teaser. We don't always have to have a twist. I can always be the tease for you. <laughs> well, you're enough of a tease for this whole studio. <laughs> yeah. Andrea, thank you so much for coming into the Twisted Ten this week. Indeed. We appreciate it. Thank you for you, having me. You always brighten up our studio. Oh, thank Aww. you guys. Before we get out of here tonight, we do want to thank somebody very special to us, at least tonight, um, for a new syndication station that the Twisted Ten has been picked up on. Right. Yeah, that's important. Pretty, pretty cool stuff for us. So it's John Sweeney from 102.7 WSNR. Uh, he, that's the ultimate in rock and it's the number one rock internet radio station in the world. They're also playing some podcasts and some talk radio. So he's picked us up actually on both of our shows, living podcariously and the twisted 10. So yeah, if you are yeah. listening from there, please hit us up on Facebook, give us some love. Let us know that you're hearing us on his station. We'd, we'd greatly appreciate it. And thank you, John. We appreciate you picking us up and putting us on your air. Yes, sir. And if anybody has any questions for us or ideas for topics, Hit us up at thetwisted10 at gmail.com. All right. So on behalf of Tack and myself, Adam, as well as our guest in studio this week, Miss Andrea Joy, thank you for listening to The Twisted 10. We'll see you next week. See ya. See ya. I don't let you guess. But they're, guess they're what the def- twist is? Well, no, no, no. I'll tell you what the twist is, but you have okay. to guess based gotcha, on the gotcha, questions. Gotcha. So we're going to start off right off the bat at number 10 with the U.S. This is called The Great American Challenge. Now you're not telling us what the twist is? No, I won't tell you the twist until the end. Okay, gotcha. Go ahead. Okay. So, The Great American Challenge. This is less of a drinking game and more of an intoxication triathlon. Isn't that a great combination of words? <laughs> intoxication <sounds> triathlon. awful. <laughs> I'm All not right. a big drinker, but man. Teams of four must compete to first conquer a 30-pack of beer, then triumph over an eighth of an ounce of marijuana, then prevail over two large pizzas, and finally, after all three of those... Complete a hundred piece puzzle before midnight. The wow. order the order of the first three events doesn't matter. You can vary those. And mostly it is a matter of who can complete it as opposed to who finishes first. You have to do the puzzle at the very end. That's the, the last competition. Those who complete the challenge win nothing but glory and bragging rights over their friends. <laughs> Does it say what time this starts? No. Nope. You have till midnight, so you can <laughs> no. start it like <laughs> four. Yeah, Twelve yeah, hours so. before. <laughs> yeah. What do you think would be the hardest part about that? Well, how puzzle? many how many how many people are on a team? Four per team. So oh, thirty four. beers okay. isn't too bad. Okay. I don't know how much it, I'm not a spot. T minus ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. All three engines up and burning. Two. One, zero, and lift off. One, two, three, four. You're listening to the Twisted Ten, bringing you original and unique post created top 10 lists recorded live in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida, with hosts Tack Van Sickle and Adam Poston. All right, welcome to the next episode of The Twisted Ten. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Adam Poston. Sitting across from me is my boy. I am Tack Van Sickle. What up, Tack? How are you? I'm super. How are you? I'm doing good. And sitting in studio with us as a guest this week, but not guest host, she's just sitting in with us as listening to my Twisted Ten list, is Andrea Joy. Hi. How are you? I am very good. I must say, I really did like your episode last week on the twisted laws that are still in place across the states. That was a pretty (laughs) good episode. I guess that's why you let me come in tonight. This is her third time on the show, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Starting to become a regular thing. Don't get too comfortable. (laughs) I can't get enough of you guys. You guys are just too Uh, fabulous. Tell the story (laughs) off here. How's that? That sounds good. All right. So moving along. All right. So number nine, we're going to go to... Hong Kong. This is called the Hong Kong Animal Spirit. 
<laughs> One of the traditions they have there is to put dead animals in alcohol and let it sit there for multiple years. It supposedly puts the properties of that animal into the alcohol Ew. so that you become like the animal when you drink it. Ew. Cobra Gross. wine, for example, I've heard of that. Is supposed to give you the strength of a cobra. A tiger penis vodka is supposed to be for virility. You know what virility is, Ty? Is that like fertility? Dick strong. Dick strong. Yes. Strong like bull. I drink that all the time. And sex drive. Mm-hmm. They put turtles in another alcohol and geckos in another. So they put all these animals in all these different alcohols to consume the, the essence yeah, the of that animal. Power of insurance. <laughs> I see what you did there. See what I did there. But they really believe there's a connection with these animals. So that's one of Hong Kong's traditions. Be some shitty tasting why some all fermented animal up in your up in your beer. Yeah, that sounds I would just not be good. sick before I was. I've heard drunk. about the cobra one before. I think I've had some buddies that are well, drinking that. You know, that you've ever heard of horny goat weed and those types of pills that you know, you can buy it like the convenience stores that are supposed to make your. Can you libido. buy like a pickle? So let me get right into it, Tack. What's one of the things that you enjoy doing when you come over to the Twisted Ten Studios? Um. Well, I. You always seem to cater each event. Okay. So that's always nice. Catering's good. So so food. Okay. What else? What um, else do you enjoy partaking in when you're here? Vaping. Okay. That's fine. What um, else? Well, I was gonna say it. I just didn't know oh, how no, that's you're getting it. Um. <laughs> I enjoy Andrea Joy. <laughs> okay. And we're, we're kind of beating around the bush. Consumption of a product sometimes. What else do you consume in the Okay, studio? I get it. You buy everything from me. No, no. I enjoy drinking my wine. <laughs> there we go. Oh, well, I don't drink wine. I drink Coke Zero. You drink some beer when you come over here, too. Oh, yeah, every once in a while. Yes. Yeah, sure. And a whiskey. And oh. whiskey, bourbon. You had a bourbon over here one time. You had a Jack and Coke a long time back. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I did. Like my first time oh, here. Oh, don't be shy, Tack. No, my first time here, I did. I did. You're right. All right. So this week on yeah. the Twisted 10, yeah. I'm presenting you yeah. with yeah. the Twisted yeah. Drinking Traditions or Games from Around the World. Ooh, do we have to play each one? Interesting. Mm, I would like to play each one of these. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, are drinking games or traditions. It, it's a mix of both. Right. From some are in the U.S. and some are from all over the world. So we're going to, there is a twist to this episode. I was going to ask you, is there a twist? I'm not going to tell you to the end. I'm, I don't know how much an eighth of an ounce of marijuana is. Is that a I lot? I don't know either. I think it's like one of them 20 bag things, maybe. What's like, a 20 bag? I would say like this much, but that doesn't help. <laughs> that doesn't help a listener. <laughs> no. It's like a pickle. Like yeah, a like the size pickle. of a pickle. <laughs> That's a lot. Or maybe like in like when the the pickles are like quarter or put in half. A spear? Yeah, a spear. Huh. Like maybe like a spear, <laughs> pickle spear. But that even then, that's a lot. I So I've heard. So, but you can do the puzzle first? No, has to be last. Puzzle has to be last. So you have last. to have done all first three of those things. So drink 30 beers, <clears throat> uh, smoke an eighth or consume an eighth. Of an ounce of marijuana. That could be wrong. Maybe it's smaller. But you have a week. team of four. Yep. So you could have three people do all of that and the fourth person do the puzzle. I don't know if that... It's a team of four. I mean... Interesting. There are no bylaws the here. Found her, found can found do her the loophole. Puzzle. So two My people drink rules. the beer. No. You can't have one person smoke that much marijuana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be one stone motherfucker. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, that, no. Oh my god! I don't think that's an eighth, though. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's it's an ugh. eighth of what? Like regular or like an eighth of an ounce of I, look? I don't know. Purple Kush from the next thing. I have no clue. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> is it, I don't. Okay. Is this medicinal? When I when yeah. I. Ugh. I don't know. Never mind. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, Tack was about to come into some revelations there. All right. <laughs> maybe, I'll, 